Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions on this Thursday, December 22nd. Yeah. Sorry, I'm leaning into you guys a little bit here. I was cleaning the dust off of my screen on the side here. You know, one of those things, I, I got out my lens cleaner, I cleaned my glasses, and I went, oh, my phone's dirty. Oh, my watch is dirty. I should get my tablet out and clean that, too. Oh, that screen over here is dirty. Boy, I cleaned the grease off my watch, and you wouldn't know that I had. Holy cow. Well, anyway, good morning. Glad you're here with me on this Thursday morning for a little time in God's Word together as we continue with some of the, uh, uh, the homilies of Christmas that... Uh, uh, Martin Luther wrote. Uh, today, uh, snow is falling. Um, we're supposed to be under uh, snowmageddon uh, today and tomorrow and into Saturday morning. I, I personally haven't seen it yet. Um, it, it's snowing, you know. Okay, it's snowing. It's it's North Wisconsin. It's, it's going to snow, but uh, uh, I don't know. I keep watching the weather map and it almost looks like the snow comes to our area and then just dissipates. So um, we're, we're, it's snowing right now. It wasn't snowing when I got up. It's snowing right now. It's supposed to stop in 20 minutes or something. I, we're supposed to get 15 inches out of this somehow. I don't know. I, the, but then when I look at the day by or the hour by hour forecast, it looks like there's only maybe six or seven inches over the next two days. So I don't know. Cold though. There's cold coming, and that that is clear on the weather maps. Um, we're gonna temperatures are gonna drop later today and into the, into tonight uh, again, um, and uh, possibly some wind kick up. So I I don't know, you know. I stay tuned, right? Uh, stay tuned to local weather if you're in the area here to see what's coming. And um, doesn't look like you guys in Michigan have gotten much yet. So I don't know. We'll just have to see. Um, yesterday, I only said hi to three or four people because that's all that showed up on my screen. And then afterwards, and I had renewed and refreshed the screen a couple times. And afterwards, uh, Bonnie said, well, this person, did you see this person? Did you see this person? Did you see? I said, no, they weren't on the screen. Because um, you guys know I like to say good morning to you. Now now you're you're popping in. So I'm assuming whatever it was that was causing me difficulties yesterday is kind of gone so I don't, it's Facebook guys I don't know um, I wish I had a better platform but the the advantage of Facebook is that you you all know how to get there and you all know how to find me um, you know a year ago I was talking or six months ago about going to a different platform um, I'm still thinking about that and and I'm using YouTube the I record this and then it goes on to YouTube um, I upload it there, and it, it's on at 11 o'clock in the morning um, on, on, on my YouTube channel, Rev Sutton uh, at YouTube. Um, but I don't know. There just isn't another platform that's got this simple delivery out there right now that, that has the following. And, you know, we've got 100 and I don't know the last time I looked, 130, 140 people who are uh, registered to this site, who have, who have signed up to our open group here, um, uh, and there's anywhere from from ten to twenty of you who join me live each day, and um, judging by the numbers that I see when I look at activity, uh, anywhere from fifty to a hundred people watching it throughout the day. So um, I don't want to desert that situation. So. Anyway, good morning. I'm glad you're here with me. We're going to be talking about the shepherds today, uh, Luther's Luther's homily on the shepherds. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, so let's see who's here with us this morning. Uh, me, of course. Neil and Geraldine, good morning to you guys. Mushtak, good morning and good evening. Yeah, from Karachi. Yeah. Um, I was reading yesterday about uh, a Christian imprisoned over there that um, has been uh, sentenced to death now. So I'm, I've got to go back and research that a little bit. I just caught it in a top of the hour news blip. Kathy, good morning to you. Verna, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Michael and Karen, good morning. Twenties, 
20s in Florida? You might as well just come back to Michigan, Michael. It's warmer. <clears throat> well, that's not good, though, because that doesn't, if it actually gets there, that doesn't bode well for the fruit industry down in Florida. That's our oranges and our lemons and... <sighs> Yeah. Jill and John, good morning to you guys up there in Rhinelander. Uh, Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Renee, good morning. Prepping for the big storm. Yeah. Bonnie went yesterday to uh, our grocery store in Tomahawk, Triggs, um, and she said it was absolutely insane. Um, the parking lot was packed and people were lined up and they were not all in a good mood, you know. Um, the cashiers were fairly grumpy she said uh let's see here so good morning renee um jerry good morning this keeps jumping on me here jerry good morning to you linda and keith good morning and there's deb and ann and grant good morning to you guys gail good morning to you miss fashing how are you uh say a prayer for bill oh no oh Carpal tunnel. Well, that, okay. I mean, surgery is surgery, right? Um, but Bonnie had the carpal tunnel surgery on one of her hands here a year or so ago, and it, and it went quite well. So we will add Bill to our prayers this morning. Um, not a problem at all. Um, all right, now I'm going to just bear with me a minute here because I'm going to refresh this screen, which takes a second. I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss anybody if the screen refreshes that way. The problem is it reformats when I do that. Okay, so, yeah, so Gail's still my last comment. All right, good morning, everybody. Those watching in the background, hello, glad you're with us. Those watching later today, uh, whether here or on YouTube, God's blessings, glad you're here with us. Let's get into this on this Thursday morning. Um, so we're not doing the Treasure of Daily Prayer. We're doing these little homilies, um, but still, we... We, uh, we always want to start uh, in the Lord's name. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading today, Luke chapter 8, or Luke, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. You'll hear this on Christmas Eve, too. Luke 8, or Luke 2, verse 8 to 20. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, or with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go out over, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. Our homily here from Roland Beaton's edited little Martin Luther Christmas book, The Homily Shepherds. <clears throat> and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. That was a mean job watching flocks by night. Common sense calls it low-down work, and the men who do it are regarded as trash. But the evangelist lauds the angels because they proclaimed their message only to the shepherds watching their flock by night. 
These were the real sheep herders. And what did they do? They did what real shepherds should do. They stayed in their station and did the work of their calling. They were pure in heart and content with their work, not aspiring to be townsmen or nobles, nor envious of the mighty. Next to faith, this was the highest art, to be content with the calling in which God has placed you. I have not learned it yet. Who would have thought that, that men whose job was tending unreasoning animals would be so praised that not a pope or a bishop is worthy to hand them a cup of water? It is the very devil that no one wants to follow the shepherds. The married man wants to be without a wife or the nobleman to be a prince. It is, if I were this, if I were that, you fool, the best job is the one you have. If you are married, you cannot have higher status. If you are a servant, you are in the very best position for you. Be diligent and know that there are no greater saints on this earth than servants. Do not say, if I were, say, I am. Look at the shepherds. They were watching their flocks by night, and an angel came and made them apostles, prophets, and children of God. Caiaphas, Herod, and the high priests were not deemed worthy. It would rather be one of those shepherds than that the Pope should make me a saint or the emperor make me a king. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were sore afraid. The field was filled with light, brilliant, dazzling. Not the town, but the field was lighted up. Why did not the angel go to Jerusalem? There was the worship established by God. There were the princes of the people and the rulers of the church and the state. There were the temple and the high priests ordained by God. Why did not the angel go to them? He went to Bethlehem, a dung heap compared with Jerusalem, as Pratow is to Nuremberg. And he did not go to the town of Bethlehem, but to the shepherds. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. This joy is not just for Peter and Paul, but for all people. Not just to apostles, prophets, and martyrs, does God say, but to you. Come, see baby Jesus. Fear not, said the angel. Fear, I fear the death. I fear the judgment of God, the world, hunger, and the like. The angel announces a Savior who will free us from fear. Not a word is said about our merits and our works, but only a gift which we are to receive. For unto you is born this day, that is, unto us. For our sakes he is taken on flesh and blood from a woman, that his birth might become our birth. I too may boast that I am a son of Mary. This is the way to observe the feast, that Christ be formed in us. It is not enough that we should hear his story if the heart be closed. I must listen, not to a history, but to a gift. If I tell you that someone on a certain mountain peak has picked up a hundred golden, you will say, what is that to me? But if you are the one who's picked it up, you will be joyful. What is it to me if someone else has goods, honors, riches, and a pretty wife? That does not touch the heart. But if you hear that this child is yours, that takes root. And a man becomes suddenly so strong that to him, death and life are the same. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths in a manger. This is God's wedding. Where is the castle? A cow stall, a manger, with an ox and an ass? A final bridal bed, a fine bridal bed, fit to lay a dog in. But the angels are not ashamed of it. Ye shall find him lying in a manger. The only present you need to bring to this wedding is a happy heart. God smiles and all the host of heaven rejoices. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. 
an innumerable multitude, more angels in heaven than blades of grass in all the gardens in the whole world. So many men have never lived on earth as there are angels in heaven. You would think that some of these angels might have gone to the baby Jesus to take him a golden cradle or a feather bed or some warm water. Why didn't they? They were singing that he is the Lord and Savior. Why then did he not go to lend, why did they not go to lend him a hand? That is something we cannot understand. We shall simply have to believe it until we find, find out at the resurrection. They were praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. See what God did in heaven about this birth, which the world despised and did not even see and know. The joy was so great that the angels could not stay in heaven, but had to break out and tell man on earth. The angels proclaimed to the shepherds tidings of great joy. This is a mighty comfort to us. What the world despised, the angels honored. They would have had a much bigger celebration if God had allowed them, but he wished to teach us through his son to despise the pomp of the world. All the angels in heaven, not one accepted, saying, Glory to God in the highest. What a shame that all men should not preach this word when all the angels in heaven play it on organs and pipes in all of eternity. The angels had no bigger congregation than two shepherds in a field. They were filled with too great joy for words. And we who hear this passage, behold, I bring you good tidings. Never feel one spark of joy. I hate myself when I see him laid in the manger in the lap of his mother and hear the angels sing, my heart does not leap into flame. With what good reason should we all despise ourselves that we remain so cold when this word is spoken to us over which all men should dance and leap and burn for joy? We act as though it were a frigid historical fact that does not smite our hearts, as if someone were merely relating that the sultan has a crown of gold. Yet on earth peace, saying the angels, goodwill toward men. The kingdom of Christ is a proclamation of peace and grace as the angels sang that he should be the savior of the whole world to free his people and save them from their sins, that he has done and still is doing. He is not the sort of Lord who fights with the sword and has to do with civil government. Rather, he rules with a gracious preaching of peace. For that reason, he is called Jesus, meaning a savior who helps his people to turn and be saved. We have often explained and explain again how to understand the kingdom of our Lord, how to distinguish the spiritual and the temporal realms, that this Lord Christ does not build castles, towns, and villages like an emperor, king, or elector of Saxony, or even like me in, this, in my own household, but he saves his people from their sins. This is a fair, dear, and precious assurance to troubled and tormented consciences laden with sins that to them and to us all, a child is born who will rule and vindicate, who will help and not destroy, murder, strangle, or kill. These are not the words of man. This preaching is from heaven. And God be praised. It is communicated also to us. For it, ju for it is just the same to hear and read this preaching as to receive it from an angel. The shepherds did not see the angels. They only saw a great light and heard the word of the angel. Just as one can hear it now or read it in a book, if eyes and ears are open to learn and rightly use it. If one does not know the baby Jesus, it is impossible that one should rightly honor God. Because men do not know and revere this child, they rage and devour each other. Where this child is accepted, there will be plenty of healing upon earth. For what is it like where Christ is not? What is the world, if not a downright hell and nothing but lying, greeting, gluttony, drunkenness, adultery, assault, and murder? That is the very devil. Friends can no more be trusted than foes, but those who hear the angels sing, who know and receive the baby Jesus and give due honor to God are like gods to their fellow men, peaceable, kind folk, 
glad to help and counsel. When God is honored, then men are friendly, without hate or envy, each regarding the other as a greater than himself, saying, Dear brother, pray for me. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem, and let us see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. This is a great miracle that the shepherds should have believed this message. They might easily have thought to themselves, Are we two shepherds worthy of the whole host of heaven that should be marshaled for us? And all the kings of the earth and the dwellers in Jerusalem be passed by? I know I would have appealed to common sense, and I would have said, Who am I compared to God and angels and kings? It is an apparition. But the Holy Spirit, who preached through the angels, caused the shepherds to believe. They were so strong in the faith that they were worthy to be spoken to by angels, and to hear every word, every, uh, hear every angel in heaven singing a cantata for them. This is a pure wonder that enters not into the heart of man. Our God begins with angels and ends with shepherds. Why does he do such a preposterous thing? He puts a babe in a crib. Their common sense revolts and says, Could not God have saved the world in some other way? I would not have sent an angel. I would have simply called the devil and said, Let my people go. The Christian faith is foolishness. It says that God can do anything and yet makes him so weak that either his son had no power or wisdom or else the whole story is made up. Surely the God who from the beginning said, let there be light, let there be firmament, let the dry land appear, could have said to the devil, give me back my people, my Christians. God does not send even an angel to take the devil by the nose. He sends, as it were, an earthworm lying in weakness and helpless without his mother, that he suffers him to be nailed to a cross. The devil says, I will judge him. So spoke Caiaphas and Pilate. He is nothing but a carpenter. And then in his weakness and infirmity, he crunches the devil's back and alters the whole world. He suffered himself to be trodden under the foot of a man and to be crucified. And through weaknesses, he takes the power of the kingdom. And the shepherds came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. God is amazing. The babe is in a manger, not worthy of a cradle or a diaper, and yet he is called Savior and Lord. The angels sing about him. The shepherds hear and come and honor him, whom no maid serves as he lies with an ox and an ass. If I had come to Bethlehem and seen it, I would have said, this does not make sense. Can this be the Messiah? This is sheer nonsense. I would have not let myself be found inside the stable. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which is told them concerning this child and all that they heard, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Here we see that the preaching and the singing of the angel were not in vain. However much the shepherds loved their sheep, they were went at once to see the babe, whom the angels called the Lord. This is the first fruit, that they followed the word of the angel. The second is that they all became preachers themselves and told everybody what they had learned from this child. For the evangelist says, And all that they heard, all that all they that heard it wondered at those things which was told them by the shepherds. Yes, but did they remember? But they did not remember them very long. For a quarter of a year, anyone could have told how the child had been born at Bethlehem, how the angels sang and the wise men came from the east. But two or three or four years afterward, everyone had forgotten. And when the Lord came to baptism at the age of 30, no one remembered anything about it. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She wrote them in her heart, meditated upon them, and thought to herself, This is wonderful news that I am the mother of the child whom the angels call Lord. These thoughts sank so deeply into her heart that she would have held them through the whole world were against her, although the whole world were against her. 
Why did she ponder these things in her heart? Because she was, she too was in need of preaching. Even though she was the mother and had borne the child, she had need to ponder these words in her heart in order to strengthen her faith and increase her assurance. She reflected how these words corresponded to those of the angel. He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest. The message of the angels fitted exactly with the Annunciation by Gabriel. This was to her great joy and confirmation. Without these, these, a human heart would have difficulty in believing. I am the mother of the king of kings lying here in this manger. There was nothing kingly about the babe, but Mary heard from the shepherds that she that he was the savior of the world and the greater than all the kings and that the shepherds or the, oh sorry that she should be his mother and nurse the quality of faith in this virgin no words can express if anyone has faith and thinks he knows enough let him take a lesson from this mother and let him assemble the passages of scripture in order to confirm his faith if he has one passage good but if he has eight or ten, better. When I die, I see nothing but sheer blackness except for this light. Unto you is born this day a Savior. The Savior will help me when all else fails, when the heaven and the stars and all the creatures glory. I, could, I see nothing in earth and heaven but this child. This light should be so great in my eyes that I can say, Dear Mary, you have borne this child not for yourself alone, you are indeed his mother, but I have an even greater honor than yours as mother. Your honor is the bearing of the body of this child, but my honor is this, that you have my treasure, and I know no one, man or angel, who can help me as can the babe that you, dear Mary, hold in your lap. If for the sake of this child a man could count all gold and goods, all power and honor and as blackness, if compared with this child, the stars in heaven and all the treasures of earth were as nothing, then he would know the true use of the angel's message. Enough has been said on the use and fruit of the birth of Christ. The sum of it all is here. Unto you, born this day, a Savior. Let us look for a moment at the spiritual significance. Mary is the figure of Christianity. That is all Christians who wrap the newborn child in the word of the gospel. The swaddling clothes signify the preaching of the gospel. The manger signifies the place where Christians come together to hear the word of God. The ox and the ass, they stand for us. But the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is wrong. We should correct this passage to read... They went and shaved their heads, fasted, told their, rosar fold, told their rosaries, and put on cowls. Instead, we read, the shepherds returned. Where to? To their sheep? Well, that can't be right. Did they not leave everything and follow Christ? Must not one forsake father and mother, wife and child to be saved? But the scripture says plainly that they returned and did exactly the same work as before. They did not despise their service, but took it up again where they left off with all fidelity. And I tell you that no bishop on earth ever had so fine a crook as those shepherds. Amen. A little long. I apologize for that, but it's Luther. They say Luther used to preach for hours at a time. I can see why, because he gets one verse and off he goes. No greater gift than this. And the child be born of Mary for you. Let us continue with the uh, Lord's Prayer. Or not, yeah, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we pray this day for those who are in need, whether it be body, uh, aches of body and soul from age or illness, or in need of healing and strengthening, or simply in comfort uh, as, as illness draws to a close. 
We ask, Lord, your healing for all of those. Wisdom and strength for the doctors and caregivers of those uh, entering into surgery. We pray especially this day for Bill Fashing, that his doctors would have wisdom and that his uh, body would mend following that surgery and he would find relief uh, from it. We ask, Lord, that you be with others who have asked for our prayers. Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Neely, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them, Lord, in, in, in and for the sake of your Son, our Lord, even Jesus the Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotion to a close on this Thursday morning. Be safe, regardless of what the weather is. Keep warm. Um, if your neighbor is suffering or in need when the storms hit, uh, do what you can to help them. Be Christ to them, even as Christ has come to you in the manger. God's peace. Excuse me. God's peace. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday morning, for our daily devotion together at one more Luther uh, homily. God's peace.